This week's episode, I want to show you how you can make use of the parameters features within Fusion 360. This will allow you to model your model once, and then let's say you have this box, you want it twice as wide, now it is now twice as wide. Oh, you want it a bit more sturdy, now we have thicker walls. Hey guys, David here, and welcome to Make a Software, the weekly series in addition to my project videos, where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY projects. Now before I show you step by step how you can set it up, I want to quickly show you how you can get to it. This is a model I've created of a little parts tray that I did fully with these parameters. If you want to access them, you can go to Modify, Change Parameters. In here, you get this little window where down here on the model parameters, you have all the different dimensions you ever entered in your sketches. For example, here's my very first sketch and I did uh, something as uh, four millimeters here. I can now go in and change that to a different value and then it will dynamically update the model. This will be the same as opening the sketch again and changing that dimension. But this is not what I want to focus on today. Up here, as I've already shown you, are the user parameters. You can add these yourself, give them a name, for example width here, and then give them a value. The expression tab here is uh, where you type in any expression. It can be just directly a value or for example, I'm working here in millimeters, but I typed in two inches for the width here. And then here on the right, you can see the actual value that will be used. For the two inches, that would be 50.8 millimeters. But I could also, uh, for example, uh, say here uh, 50 uh, and then plus uh, the depth. And then if I hit enter here, I'm now using this parameter inside of that parameter. And you can then here on the right, see the total value. Inside of the sketch here, you can see that these dimensions here are fixed. And that is because if I double click on them here, you can see this one is width, which is the variable that we looked at earlier. And this one here is the depth. So if I change these parameters in there, they will change in this sketch. And then in the end, since Fusion is parametric, it will automatically update the model. You can't just use these dimensions inside of sketches though. Also, for example, in this shell command here, where I'm uh, first model the whole thing as a solid block and then create a shell from it, I have the thickness here, which is one of the values it needs, as the wall thickness from my parameters. And then this will, of course, also update. And uh, if we uh, go in here and I change the wall thickness in here from two millimeters to three millimeters, uh, this command in here is updated. These here are basically just shortcuts to other parameters down here. You saw earlier and I went into the sketch one and here is this width again. I could also, instead of having a custom parameter up here, change it down here, uh, but it is a lot easier to just have a couple of parameters. In most cases, you won't need more than four. And then a lot of other things are derived from that. So it's a lot easier to manage it doing it this way. If we're starting a new sketch here, we don't have to immediately think of these parameters. I mean, one thing could be to, if you already know what you're going to model exactly, you can go in here, modify, change parameters, and then already add your uh, parameters. For example, I already know I'm going to need the width. And, but then you also need to already give it a value, uh, an expression here. So I'm going to say 50 for now, but I can go ahead and change this later. But then I'm going to here create my first sketch. Let's say we want to have a rectangle here. And I know here I want the width. And if you start typing, you immediately uh, get a list of all the parameters. So you can easily then hit enter to autocomplete. And then here, the height, I do not know yet. Uh, but now I know I actually also want to do that as a parameter. So I can uh, just, uh, while I'm still in the sketch, open this window again and do depth as well. And let's say uh, I want this half of the width. So let's do width and then divide it by two. Now I can use the dimension feature and dimension uh, the depth here as depth. And because the depth is the derivative of the width, if I go ahead and change the width in here from 50 to uh, 60, then both of these dimensions will dynamically update. One area where this feature is especially useful if you, for example, uh, designing a model that you will later 3D print and you need to have the tolerances in there everywhere so that different parts can move uh, in relationship to each other. Let's say we have this pack here in the middle and then we have this outer that just needs to be ever so slightly larger. Now you could go ahead and dimension between the two. Let's say, um, you know, 0.2 is the perfect value for your 3D printer. but now you want to print this on a different uh, different uh, printer uh, that your body has. Uh, and now if you have a bunch of sketches where everywhere you put this 0.2 in there, it's a pain to edit. But if you instead put in uh, 
a new parameter, call it tolerance for example, and then in here do that as tolerance, then in the end if you have a small change and you instead of 0.2 you need 0.25, you can just edit that and everything will update dynamically. And that's it for this week's tip. I hope it's helped you guys. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next week.